While you may not know it, the arrival of United States politician Nancy Pelosi in Taiwan this August pushed us to the brink of a possible world war. China was expected to launch a full-scale attack on Taiwan that the US would counter, pushing the other countries into chaos too. Fortunately, China refrained from the act and saved millions of lives. But what does China have to do with all of this? And why does it want to conquer Taiwan? Let's see in today's video. Since the end of the Civil War, the People's Republic of China has adhered steadfastly to the One China Principle, which is a position that asserts that there is only one China and that Taiwan is an integral part of China. Any nation, organization, or business that the People's Republic of China believes challenges the notion of One China will invariably be subject to threats and boycotts. It was construed that the United States attempted to upset the status quo during Pelosi's travel to Taiwan. However, this was not the case. Even though it was an unofficial visit, it did not violate the premise that only one China exists. Although it was always there, the motion for one China has recently gotten stronger. The Chinese Communist Party, ever since it got hold of power, has prioritized achieving the peaceful unification of Taiwan and the rest of mainland China at some point in the future, if at all possible. But if it does not work, resorting to force might be the only option. And although it has always been on the Communist Party's agenda to reunite Taiwan, the General Secretary of the party and the Chairman of Central Military Commissions, Xi Jinping, has made his personal goal to incorporate Taiwan into China during his time of power. Because of this, many people are under the impression that an invasion will occur sooner rather than later. The drills that took place the week before last were unprecedented in their magnitude and proximity to the territorial waters of Taiwan. As a result, a significant portion of the media has been writing worrying headlines suggesting that an invasion is around the horizon. To the people of Taiwan, on the other hand, these drills represent a continuation of a sequence of intimidation and saber-rattling that has been going on since 1949, when the Chinese nationalist Kuomintang retreated to Taiwan after losing the civil war in China. These threats and statements of hyperbole coming from Taiwan's loudest communist neighbor have been routine for the Taiwanese. Beijing eventually ended its drills around the Taiwan Strait last week, but announced that they would be continuing on a more regular basis in the future. The drills were China's indignant response to Nancy Pelosi's visit to the island, which China considered a renegade province despite Pelosi's assertions to the contrary. But, despite the present escalation in the Taiwan Strait, there is reason to maintain an optimistic outlook regarding the likelihood that an invasion will not occur shortly. And this is not just a guess. We have many factors to support our claim. Even though the CCP frequently asserts that invading Taiwan is a top priority, it is highly unlikely that they will pursue this course of action if it has a negative impact on their economic growth. After all, the Chinese people are content to live under an authoritarian regime because they are led to believe that the government will find a solution to any problem in exchange for the fact that the economy is thriving and their wealth is growing. The CCP holds as its highest priorities the maintenance of their nation's stability, the acceleration of their country's growth, and the assumptions of the role of a preeminent leader on the international stage. For the time being, China will keep applying pressure on the Taiwanese government. Without Pelosi's visit, they were going to carry out the military exercises sooner or later anyhow. It served as a pretext for them to get started. In addition to maintaining a high level of pressure and intimidation on the island, the CCP will keep working towards the goal of reunifying the island by peaceful means. This is the most advantageous course of action for them to take. What China does not realize, however, is that the more pressure they put on Taiwan, the more the people of Taiwan would struggle for their home and democratic principles. This is pretty evident seeing the millions of protests held against China. Another factor holding China back is that although its economy has experienced nothing short of incredible growth over the previous several decades, it is simultaneously seeing the first decline in growth in 28 years. Whole cities have been placed under lockdown due to the stringent COVID-19 policies enforced by the CCP, which has negatively impacted their capability of manufacturing. It is one of the things that has contributed to China's poor economic growth. However, the lockdowns caused by COVID-19 are not the only factor contributing to China's sluggish economic growth. 
China's property market is on the verge of financial collapse too. The real estate industry in China accounts for 30% of the country's total economic output, and frequent lockdowns have hurt both savings and investments. Evergrande and several other real estate companies have already failed to make payments on their overseas loans. Evergrande skipped a payment on a loan worth $300 billion a year ago, and there is a serious possibility that other businesses will do the same thing. China is unique among developed nations because investors and property buyers frequently make payments in advance for unfinished construction projects. Due to COVID-19, poor management, and unscrupulous practices, many real estate businesses could not fulfill their requirements of completing their building projects on time, which led to demonstrations and a boycott of mortgage lenders. If the Chinese Communist Party did not intervene and take on some of the financial burdens, China's economy would suffer severe damage if the country's real estate market were to crash. Another problem worth mentioning here is China's persistence in maintaining its One China policy over the course of several decades. Each member of the People's Liberation Army, the armed wing of the CCP, is a single child. Parents have traditionally placed a higher value on having sons than daughters because they hope their sons will one day carry on the family's name. When war breaks out, many families stand to lose their genetic lineage. And lastly, you might have already guessed by now, all these war tactics are just gimmicks. Tricks that CCP likes to play on its citizens. We see aggression on the screen, but something else is happening at the back. All these stunts serve no purpose other than to distract the citizens. We have already discussed the problems that China is fighting. In this critical time, the government is using the war to paint a false picture of itself instead of addressing the issues to its fullest might. The budget deficits and the poor administration can be hidden very well behind the cries of war that China itself sparks now and then. In light of these things, it is easy to see that failure costs would be enormous if the war does occur. It is possible that they would be sufficient to bring down an already unstable administration riddled with paranoia and insecurity. After seeing the West's response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which included sanctions and backing for Ukraine, the CCP would undoubtedly be aware of the ramifications of an all-out invasion or blockade of the country. However, the ongoing conflict between Ukraine and Russia has also demonstrated that everything is conceivable. Maintaining the status quo and continuing to protect Taiwan requires a concerted effort on the part of the international community, which must present a unified front to resist caving into China's outrageous demands. This brings us to the end of this video. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing more content like this. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time!